Hi folks, we're going to take a look at some of the solutions from the uh, Unit 2 Mid-Unit Evaluation. So I'll take up some of the questions that gave people difficulties. So we're going to start with uh, Knowledge and Understanding number 3 here. Okay, so here we're dividing two monomials, and the way in which we uh, divide monomials is we uh, divide the numbers, and then we divide the uh, powers with the same base using the exponent rules. Okay, so let's start with 6 over 8. Uh, well, that doesn't give me an integer, but it can be reduced. So 6 over 8 reduces to 3 over 4. Okay, 0 0.75 would also be acceptable. Okay, next I look at the powers of x. So here I see x to the power 4. Here I just see x, so we assume it's x to the power 1. And the rule for dividing uh, powers with the same base is you keep the same base but you subtract the exponent, so 4 minus 1 is 3, so this leaves us with x cubed. Okay, now we go to y, uh, so y to the 6 divided by y cubed, so again, same base, so we can just subtract the exponent, so 6 minus 3 is 3, so we're left with uh, y cubed, okay, and then here we go to the z's, and we see that uh, same base, so 2 minus 2 is 0, z to the 0, now uh, by convention, we don't actually write z to the 0 because we know that this is going to be equal to 1. So your final answer should look like 3 quarters, x cubed, y cubed. Okay, so if you do write the z to the 0, you would uh, possibly lose a mark in the communication section. Okay, so there's our final answer. So again, just to recap, to divide monomials, you divide the coefficients, and then you divide the powers with the same base. Okay, let's move on now to... Uh, knowledge and understanding number five. Okay, so what we have here is we have a polynomial, okay, with three terms. Okay, so remember the terms are separated by additions or subtractions. So polynomial of three terms being divided by 4x. Okay, so this is treated in the same way as a multiplication of a polynomial by a monomial. You distribute. Here though, you're dividing, so the distribution is a division to each term in the polynomial. Okay, so the first thing we do is we divide 24x cubed by 4x. So again, as we did before, two monomials, we divide the coefficients. So 24 divided by 4 is a nice integer. Okay, and this is x cubed divided by x to the 1. So 3 minus 1 is 2, so I'm left with x squared. Okay, next we go to the second term. We have negative 16 divided by positive 4. So that's going to give me negative 4. And then I look at the uh, powers of x. I have x squared divided by x to the 1. So 2 minus 1 is 1. So I'm just left with x. Okay. And now here, the third uh, multiplication, we have negative 4 divided by positive 4, which gives me negative 1. Okay. And then here we have x divided by x. Okay. So in fact, you can think of that as a number divided by itself is just equal to 1. Or, if you use the exponent rules, x to the 1 divided by x to the 1 is equal to x to the 0, which is just equal to 1. So remember, as before, we don't write the x to the 1. Okay, so there's our final answer. Okay, let's move on now to the application section and the thinking section, and I'm going to do all of these problems. Okay. So 1a is a pretty standard uh, simplification. Uh, so you look at your brackets. What you'd have to do first, and you realize there's no simplifying to be done inside the brackets. So now you move to the multiplication. So you have a multiplication here. This 4x multiplies the polynomial in brackets, and then the negative x squared is multiplying this binomial in the bracket. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to distribute the 4x to every term in that bracket, and we're going to distribute the negative x squared to every term in the second bracket. Okay, so here, how do we multiply monomials? Well, similar to dividing, you multiply the coefficients, and then you multiply the powers with the same base. So here, 4 times 2 is 8. x to the 1 times x squared, 1 plus 2 is 3, so x cubed. Okay, next we go, second term, 4 times negative 3, negative 12. x times x, so x to the 1 times x to the 1 is x to the 2. And then 4 times negative 4, negative 16. And then x, well, is not multiplying anything, so it does not change. So it remains 16x. Okay. 
Now let's go to the next distribution. Here we've got, remember, always keep the uh, sign that comes before your expression. So here it's negative x squared times negative 2x. So this is negative 1 times negative 2 gives me positive 2. And then x squared times x, x cubed. Okay, and lastly, negative 1 times positive 3 is minus 3. And you still have the x squared there too. Doesn't change because there's no other powers of x. <clears throat> Excuse me in that term. Okay, so now we've managed to bring it down to just a series of additions and subtractions. And so now we know we can only add and subtract like terms. Terms where the uh, uh, variable and the exponent are the same. So here we've got 8x cubed. Okay, and then we all have a plus 2x cubed. So remember, you always take the sign in front of the number. So this is positive 8 plus 2. Okay, And the way in which we add and subtract like terms is just to add and subtract the coefficients. So 8 plus 2 gives me 10x cubed. Okay, So we have a set of rules for addition and subtraction and a different set of rules for multiplication and division. Okay, Here we have negative 12x squared and then we have a minus 3x squared. So negative 12 minus 3 is negative 15x squared. And then lastly, we have the minus 16x, which does not change as, the, as there's no other terms with a power x. Okay, and there we have it, our final answer. Okay, let's move on to 1b. Now this one did give a lot of people problems, and the main difficulty seemed to have been that Remembering that the operation between these two expression is a multiplication, okay? But the first thing you have to do is take care of these exponents, all right? So let's start with this first exponent 3 on the left monomial, okay? And when you have a monomial to a power, you have to distribute that power to every part of the monomial, Okay, and again, using your exponent rules. So first you take negative 2, the coefficient to the exponent 3. So negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2. That's negative 8. Okay. Then you have x cubed to the power 3. Okay. So when you have the power of a power, exponent rules tell us that we have to multiply the exponents. So this becomes x to the 9. Okay. Here you have y to the 1 cubes. 3 times 1 is 3. So here, y cubed. Okay. Now, because I still have to multiply this to another expression, I'm going to put brackets around here because what I really want to try to avoid using is the multiplication symbol to symbolize the multiplication because I might accidentally uh, see that as a variable x instead of the multiplication sign. So that's why I'm putting brackets around this here, and I'm going to put brackets around the second term so that instead of using a multiplication symbol, I know that the uh, fact that there's nothing between these two brackets means it's multiplication. So let's do the next one. So we have to, again, distribute that exponent to each part of the monomial. So negative 3 squared, here negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9 x to the 4 to the power 2, power of a power, 4 times 2 is 8. So y to the 8, uh, sorry, x to the 8. Change that. Okay, and then here we have y to the 1 squared, 1 times 2 is 2. So y squared. Okay, notice we've done nothing yet to the denominator. Okay, so now I'm just left with multiplications and divisions, so I'm first going to multiply the numerator, and then I'll do that division last. So here, negative 8 times positive 9 is negative 72. x to the 9 times x to the 8, 9 plus 8 is 17. y cubed times y squared, 3 plus 2 is 5. And all divided by 2 x to the 4 y squared. And now finally I take care of this division, negative 72 divided by 2 gives me negative 36. Here, same base with division, 17 minus 4 is 13, and 5 minus 2 gives me y cubed. Okay, and there's my final answer, much, much simpler than the original expression I started with. So just to recap, 
First I had to take care of the exponents on these monomials, then I took care of the multiplication in the numerator, and then finally uh, that division. Okay, so now we're going to move on to question two. Okay, and here we have a measurement problem. So here they tell us that the perimeter of the triangle is 20x minus 1, and we want to find a simplified expression for side A. Okay, so since you know the perimeter is the sum of all three sides, okay, in order to find a missing side, you just have to subtract the other two sides from the full perimeter. Okay, so that's how I'm going to set up my equation here. So in order to find A, I have to take my total perimeter, 20x minus 1, and I'm going to subtract these other two sides. Okay. Now this is where you have to be careful. When you're subtracting the side of length 8x plus 3, you're subtracting this whole expression. And the way in which to correctly do that is to make sure you put brackets around that expression, 8x plus 3. Okay. This indicates that you're subtracting this whole expression. Okay. If you didn't put the brackets, you'd only be subtracting the 8x the three would still remain an addition. Okay, same thing here. Now we have to subtract the third side. In order to show that we're subtracting the whole side, we need to put that in brackets. Okay, and this is the expression now on the right that we have to simplify. So perimeter minus the other two sides, making sure we put those expressions in brackets. Okay, notice how I even put the perimeter in brackets. I didn't really need to do this, but I guess if I'm always putting brackets around my expressions, then it means I'll never forget to do it when it's very important, which it is when there's a subtraction. Okay, so let's go ahead. Here, this is like having a plus one in front. So one times anything does not change it. So this is still 20x minus one. But this is like having a minus one in front of the bracket. So when I distribute the minus one to both terms, it changes the sign. So this negative 1 times positive 8 gives me minus 8x, and negative 1 times positive 3 gives me minus 3. Okay. Similarly here, distribute the negative 1 to each of those terms. This becomes minus 6x. This becomes negative 1 times negative 2 plus 2. Okay. So we see that it was very important to have those brackets uh, around those side lengths. Okay. And now we can gather like terms. So 20x minus 8x minus 6x. So 20 minus 8 is 12. Minus 6 is 6. So 6x. And then here, negative 1 minus 3. That's negative 4. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. Okay. So our simplified expression for side A is 6x minus 2. Okay. In fact, Notice how it's the same side length as that one there. So again, you can never assume that these diagrams are to scale. Okay, they're just used to demonstrate uh, the relationships. Okay, so now let's move to the thinking question. Okay, so here we have uh, an irregular shape. Okay, and they want us to determine uh, an expression for the perimeter. Okay, so we need to find all sides and add them up to find the perimeter, except there's two sides for which we don't have uh, expressions for. Okay. Now, one thing you want to be careful of, a lot of people sort of saw the x plus 1 here, and they assumed that this was also x plus 1. But if you add x plus 1 and x plus 1, you won't get this total length. So you have to be careful about not making assumptions. So I'm going to give these sides names, and I'm going to find that before I go and find the perimeter. So I'll call this A and I'll call this B. Okay, so I look at side A, and how am I going to find side A? Well, I know this length here is 2x plus 1, okay? So I'm just going to subtract this portion here, which is just equal to x plus 1, and whatever remains will be side A. Okay, now this is again where we have to be careful. This is the longer side, and I have to subtract x plus 1. I have to subtract the whole expression when I'm determining side A. So again, that's where I need the brackets. Okay? Because I have to subtract this whole expression, whatever number this represents. Okay? So now I can simplify. 
so 2x plus 1 and here remember this is like a minus 1 so this becomes minus x and then negative 1 times positive 1 minus 1 and when I simplify I get 2x minus x and then 1 minus 1 which is just 0 so there's no point in writing plus 0 so there we go side a can be represented by x now let's do the same thing for side b okay similarly this whole side is 2x plus 6 and I want to subtract this part here to get b and that side's just given by x minus 5 okay so this is going to be given by 2x minus uh, sorry plus 6 and I'm going to subtract again make sure you put that in brackets x minus 5 so when we simplify that that stays 2x plus 6 this though there's a minus 1 in front so it becomes a minus x negative 1 times negative 5 is plus 5 and when we simplify that we get 2x minus x is x and 6 plus 5 is 11 so x plus 11 okay so now that I have these missing sides a and b I can go ahead and determine the perimeter okay so the perimeter is just the side uh, the sum of all these sides so just make sure you pick a side and then go in order till you've gotten all of them so say I start with x minus 5 so I have x minus 5 and then I'm gonna add x then I'm gonna add x plus 11 then I'm going to add x plus 1, then I'll add 2x plus 6, and then I'll add the last one, 2x plus 1. Okay, now notice here I didn't really need to put these in brackets. Okay, but if I figure again, if I just always do it, I won't forget to do it when it's important. So here, because these all have positive 1s in front of them, they don't change. So x minus 5 plus x plus x plus 11 plus x plus 1 plus 2x plus 6 plus 2x plus 1 and now we can gather up all the like terms so here I have x plus x is 2x plus x is 3x plus x is 4x plus 2x is 6x plus another 2x is 8x so there we go 8x and now we've got the numbers so negative 5 plus 11 gives me 6 plus 1 is 7 plus 6, um, oh, sorry, I lost track, <laughs> negative 5 plus uh, 11 is 6, 7 plus 6 is 13, plus 1 is 14, so 8x plus 14, okay, and I suppose here we should say that it's 8x plus 14 units, okay, since it's perimeter, it's not going to be units squared or units cubed, I suppose we should have done the same thing here, Okay, now the only reason I put the brackets, okay, is just so that it doesn't look out of place having the units afterwards, okay, because this whole thing represents the measure and it's a certain number of units, okay.